Good morning. Okay, this is our presentation. Now it is time to answer your questions. Remember, if you're going to ask a question, to invite all panelists so everyone can see the questions that are being asked. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, bachelor's and master's degrees outside the United States qualifies. So they do, however, they do have to be transcribed into English um, from a facility within the US um, so that we do know that the degree is equivalent to the US degree. Um, Again, it would be based on what you are applying for um, and what the degree was for to um, actually give you the credit um, or actually determine the credit, the amount of credit that you would get. Okay, Brenda, my husband wants me to get the license for him since he does not read or write English. Can I do that? So in order to get a license, you have to have experience doing the trade that you're applying for. So if you do not have experience in the trade, you would not be able to get the license. Um, in the application process, you have to be able to show your journeyman level experience, which is a minimum of 48 months, which is equivalent to four years. Um, you would have to be able to show that um, with an employer, with that of an employer, um, but yeah, you can't just do it because he can't um, read or write in English. You're more than welcome to help him with this application if he's the one who has the experience. Um, as you heard within the presentation, he can request a translator when he has to go to test um, so that somebody could, you know, relay um, the questions for him from English to Spanish. Um, or whatever language that you speak, um, but um, the person who's applying is the one who has to have the experience. So if you don't have the experience, I would not recommend that you apply for it. He would need to apply for it. Um, again, Brenda, husband has more than 10 years in painting business, but he wants to get the general license for everything since he has knowledge by working for builders. Can he get a general license or just a painter's license? So if he has the experience in the painting, um, again, a minimum of 48 months, um, equivalent to four years, um, that might be his best course of action. Um, the general B um, classification, he would have to be able to show, again, four years, 48 months of experience doing general B work. Um, if his specialty is painting and he hasn't done framing, if he hasn't done any other true unrelated trades, I would say no, don't apply for the general B um, to stick with the painting. But again, that that's up to you guys what you're going to do um, when the application comes in. It'll be processed. It'll be reviewed. Um, if we need to call employers, we, you know, we will. But um, I would stick with what would be his specialty if there's any doubts of what um, experience he has or what he can qualify for. Daniel, most of my experience was done overseas where there was not a contractor present. What options do I have um, to have my work validated? So with all applicants um, on your certification of work experience, you are to have a certifier. A certifier is someone who has firsthand knowledge of your experience. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a contractor. It could be somebody who you work side by side with, um, somebody who was on site. You know, it could be a foreman, um, a supervisor. It could be 
you know, your friend who was working with you side by side, somebody who has the firsthand knowledge who actually saw you do it is who we're looking for. So again, it doesn't have to be a contractor. Um, contractor doesn't have to be present, but somebody who actually saw the work being performed, who can certify that the work was performed. Thomas, if I am a Washington state contractor, can I do contract work here in California? Um, no, not until you apply for a California license. Um, we do not have reciprocity with Washington, so whatever classification that you would apply for, you would be required to test. Um, if it was A, B, or any of the Cs, there would be a trade test with the law exam. If it was a D class, it would just be the law exam. Um, but with your Washington state contractor license, you cannot do work in California. You would have to apply for our license. Uh, Thomas, if I don't pass the exam, does the state holder lower scores against you on future exams or is it recorded against your license? So we have several people who it does take multiple times to pass the exams. Um, there is a fee each time you, you have to go back in and um, take the test. I believe there's three, four weeks in between that you can take the test. I, I know you can't go back right away and do it. Um, but I do not believe that they lower the test scores. You have to meet the minimum criteria, um, and there's nothing held against you. Again, as I stated, there are several people who it might take multiple times for them to pass the exams, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you don't know what your, you know, you don't know what the exam's about, but maybe you're a bad te test taker. Um, so. It's nothing that we record or, or um, hold against anybody. Um, you're just required each time that you do have to retake an exam to, to repay a test testing fee. Elliot, I've been working on a house that has a lease option to buy. Does this qualify as work valid for past work? So you don't own the home is what I'm assuming. Um, if you own the home, it would be owner builder. If you were doing the work to upgrade um, different portions of your home, um, if somebody hired you um, to do work on the home, you know, you would have an employer. Um, I'm not quite sure about you have a lease option to buy if you're renting now or if this means, you know, what exactly that means. Um, in this case, um, I would ask for more details, but I would ask that you send those to our licensing email, um, which is licensing. It's L-I-C-E-N-S-I-N-G at CSLB dot ca dot gov um, and be a little bit more specific with your question and give a little bit more details so that somebody can have all of the information to make a determination on that. Um, if you have any other experience, if you did work for a contractor, I mean, it's a possibility that you could use that. I mean, I wouldn't say don't send this in, um, but there's no guarantees that you would actually get credit for it. Um, you would need finalized permits, um, inspection reports, and whatnot when it's owner builder on your own home. LA, you live on the property, but again, I just don't know, is that renting or is that um, if, you, if you are actually buying the home? So um, please send an email like I stated to the email address that um, I said the licensing at cslb.ca.gov with um, a little bit more information. Michael, good morning. Do certifier forms need to be original when submitted with applications? Scan copies. Scan copies are fine. As long as we have an actual signature from the certifier, um, we realize that, you know, maybe the certifier is in Utah and you worked in Utah, you know, and you're going to email the form over to them. You know, as long as we have something, they do not have to be originals. Copies are fine. What forms of payment do you accept for the application fee? 
Um, at the front desk, they accept cash. It does have to be the exact amount. They cannot give cash back uh, or change back. Um, I believe you can write a check. You could have a money order. Again, the correct amount of the application fee um, and they do have credit card options. Fernando, is Handyman needed to be a B license? I'm not quite sure what you're stating. Um, do you have to be a Handyman to be a B licensee? Um, you don't, um, however, you do have to have the experience. So again, 48 months um, for a B, you would have to have some sort of framing with two unrelated trades. Um, and you'd have to be able to um, document that on your cert certification of work experience um, with a certifier. It would definitely help, obviously, if you were a handyman and you had some of that behind you. Your other option would be if you are a handyman and you did no framing would be to apply for the B2, which would be three unrelated trades. Again, no framing. Um, and um, you are limited on what you can do. You know, there are no structural alterations. You cannot install electrical or plumbing and you can't install or replace your HVAC. Um, so it would, you know, if you don't have that framing experience, this might be the way for you to go. Again, 48 months of experience is needed for that. Um, there is a trade exam as well as a law exam for that also. Jonathan, thank you for the information. Does all the information given today apply to the B2 as well? Um, again, um, what I just stated, um, yes. So B2 is a regular classification now. It is our handyman or remodeling classification. It just doesn't include framing of any sort. Um, like I stated, <clears throat> no structural alterations to load bearing walls. Um, you can't um, install electrical plumbing or install or replace HVAC. Um, so it is three unrelated trades. You'd have to be able to put that again, your experience on the work cert with that information from your certifier. Um, so yes, the information given today does apply to the B2 classification. Um, Martin, how can I download this video? If I'm not mistaken, the video will go on YouTube um, after. I'm not so certain how long after the presentation, um, but it will be on YouTube for you to rewatch or to save in your archives and watch when you want to again. Um, I know the old ones are on YouTube as well um, under our channel of CSLB. Elliot, can I order a test or sample questions to go over prior to the test? So we do have samples on our website, which is cslb.ca.gov. Um, however, we don't send out sample tests to you. Um, to my knowledge. Um, we've transitioned our testing over to a facility that allows more testing for all the applicants. Um, so it's no longer in-house. However, again, um, the test and sample questions, you can definitely find them on our website. Um, you know, it's just like, like it says, it's just a sampling of what possibly could be on your trade test or what possibly could be on the law exams. Daniel, is there reciprocity with Arizona? There is, however, it's very limited. I want to say it's only a handful of classifications. Um, if you were to send in um, an application, you would have to have the completed form filled out from Arizona before, before sending it in and complete it and put it in with your application so that when we got your application, we could go ahead and send it um, to our 
classification deputy for review. Um, he will determine whether or not that classification does have reciprocity with Arizona and if we can go ahead and waive the trade exam for you, if there is a trade exam. Um, you are still required to take the law, um, even if you get waived on the trade, and you will always need to send in a certification of work experience. Even though you've held that license in Arizona, you still have to show us your work experience. Um, Another prerequisite for the reciprocity is you have to have had that license for a minimum of five years out of the last seven, and it would have had to have been in good standing with that other state. And just as a little note, we do have reciprocity with Arizona, um, with Nevada, and Louisiana. Those are the only three states we um, have the agreement with right now. Jonathan, I currently work as a self-employed handy person. What is the best way to document work? Are invoices with pictures sufficient? Well, I still need a certifier. So everybody needs a certifier. You will have to fill out the certification of work experience part one. Your certifier will fill out part two and everybody needs a certifier. Um, again, a certifier is somebody who has firsthand knowledge of your experience. It's not necessarily a contractor. It could be the owner of the establishment that you're working on. It could be, again, somebody who you work side by side with. Um, we do not accept pictures, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, invoices, you may be asked for invoices. However, I would not send them in initially. If you are a handy person, it just depends on the classification that you are going to apply for. Again, if you're applying for the B2, um, three unrelated trades, no structural, again, no electrical, plumbing, and HVAC installation or replacing or extending. Um, and I mean, it should be pretty straightforward on um, um, what you know or, or what you're going to put on that, that works. Or let's say you do painting, um, you do drywall, and... Um, landscaping you know those are three unrelated trades um so your certifier would need to specifically mention those as your three trades if you're applying for the b2 now if you're applying for the b um your certifier would need to put your b your structural framing with at least two unrelated trades um It'll be a little harder to do the self-employed with the B because we would ask for finalized permits and inspection reports because we would want to see that somebody signed off on these, that this was actually what was done at the site, um, and probably we would ask for project list. Um, if you have an employer, um, if you're working for a contractor, let's say it's a little easier to... Um, verify. If not, then, you know, we have to do a little bit more legwork um, to prove that, you know, that that work experience was done and that we can pass you on. Um, and just a reminder that um, CSLB is a part of DCA, so our mission is to protect the consumer. We do want you to go out there with the most knowledge you could possibly have on top of what you already know about your trade um, being with the public. Um, so our rigorous application process as well as testing, it's in place for the consumer. So we know you're going out there with what we've equipped you with or what we've deemed necessary for you to get that contractor's license. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, we do want you to succeed as a contractor um, and we do want the consumer to be protected at the same time. Um, Lourdes, what if the wife applies to the company and studies for the test and owns 20% of the company? Well, the wife would still have to have the experience. Um, in order to study for the test, you have to have the experience. Um, again, 48 months, four years, equivalent to four years. Um, in the classification that you're applying for. It's not just studying for the test. We want to know that that person who's applying is at journeyman level that doesn't need supervision and can go out there and perform 
um, their trade, you know, for the consumer. Um, other than that, I'm not quite sure. Applies to the company and owns 20% of the company. Um, the qualifier is the only one that we require to give us a percentage of ownership of the company if they're applying for a corporation, an LLC, or a partnership. Um, as a sole owner, they automatically own 100%. Um, so again, Lourdes, the only thing I could tell you is that um, the wife would have to have the experience in order to take the test. Daniel, are there special circumstances for someone who has ADHD if I need more time on the test? There is. So there is a special accommodation form um, that you can, I'm not certain if it's on the website, I, I believe it is, that you can fill out and you can request um, more time for if you have a learning disability or learning you know, need a little bit more time, um, but you can request that. Um, um, it is a special form. Um, if the form isn't online, I would suggest that you write a written request with your application so that it's all together. And when your processing technician is reviewing your application, they see that so that they can go ahead and pass that on to testing. Pedro, when renewing a license, we only pay the fee or do we have to retake the exams? Um, no, so if you are already licensed and it's time for your renewal, you're just paying the renewal fee um, as well as getting any other insurance requirements that might be needed at that time, um, you do not retest. The only time you're retesting is if you've let that license lapse over five years and you don't hold the classification anywhere else, then you would have to reapply and you would have to retake the exams. Uh, Marcella, I don't have work experience, but know about law. Can I get a license to join with another person? So um, I would say you wouldn't be able to take the exam. So if you don't have the experience, you would not there's no splitting up the exam, so somebody who has the work experience could take the trade and you would take the law exam. That, that's not how it works. It's the person who has the experience, um, the qualifier on the application is the person who will take both. They go hand in hand. So if they take the trade, they're going to take the law. Um, obviously, you can always <clears throat> join somebody else to make a license and Again, if you don't have the experience, they would be the one who would be doing the testing um, once we verified their work experience and that they were journey level in the classification that they applied for. Thank you, Elliot. Just make sure that that email address, again, is licensing at cslb.ca.gov. Richard, good morning, everyone. I just wanted to know more on the waiver for disability for veterans. Um, so this is relatively new and it only has to do with the fees. It doesn't have to do with the experience. So experience is still necessary for a contractor's license, veteran or not. Um, as far as veterans go, we do expedite the um, application process when we have a valid DD-214 that shows an honorable discharge. Um, if it doesn't, or if you don't have the DD-14 with that information, it just goes in the regular process with applicants. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to expedite testing anymore because we've outsourced our testing to make it more um, to give more options for our applicants. So the testing wouldn't be expedited, but when it comes to the processing of the application, it would be. 
Um, again, the waiver um, is just for fees. Um, I believe because it, like I said, it is fairly new, so I don't have a lot of information on it. Um, I do believe that um, it's like 50% off. I'm, I'm, I'm not certain. Um, Richard, I would ask you to send an email to the licensing at cslb.ca.gov email um, with your information and we can forward that on to our um, veterans assistance um, personnel who could answer that better for you. Thomas, aren't disaster relief contractors from out of state allowed to work in California? Um, all contractors who work in California have to be licensed in California. So if um, they're coming from out of state, they'd have to apply um, and be approved for the license before they would be allowed to work in California. Um, yeah. Gene, is it best to have more than one qualifier? You can only have one qualifier per classification. So if you have a corporation, LLC, or a partnership, um, and you have the B classification, only one person can hold that class at a time on the license. Um, you could have multiple classifications with different qualifiers, but each class has to have one qualifier at a time. They cannot have multiple. Art, I'm a handyman applying for a B2 license. What are the three trades? They just have to be three unrelated trades. Again, um, no structural framing to load bearing walls, no alterations, um, no installation of electrical, HVAC, and plumbing, no replacement of HVAC. Um, it could be as simple as I stated earlier as painting, let's say drywall and landscaping. Um, it just depends on what you performed and what fits, you know, within that realm. They might be three different classifications. Um, it just can't, again, include any framing um, or um, the installation of electrical, HVAC, and plumbing um, as stated in the, um, in our workshop here. Thomas, is there a licensed category for dyslexia? disaster relief contractors. No, there isn't. The classification would be specific to what you were trying to perform in California. Jonathan, can you give me an example of the three unrelated trades? Um, I just did. So again, it could be painting, drywall, and landscaping. It could be um, lath and plastering. Um, um, cabinetry and let's say I'm drawing a blank um, and uh, um, <laughs> tree trimming tree service you know it just has to be three unrelated trades um, you know that don't go hand in hand again no framing no structural installation of um, no installation of electrical HVAC and plumbing Art, I have worked for interior designers in residential commercial management companies. Can I use them on my certificate certification statement? If you worked for them, they can definitely be your certifier. Again, your certifier does not have to be a contractor. It can be somebody who has firsthand knowledge of the um, work experience when it was gained. Um, dependent upon the classification, we might ask for more information, but they can be used. Thomas, for the bond monetary requirements, roughly 15,000, can family or associates co-sign for your bond? Um, that's completely up to the bond company. That has nothing to do with CSLB. We require that you have right now a $15,000 contractor's bond, but as far as when you go to um, pay for it, apply for it with a bonding company, that's completely up to them. Thomas Burke, if you don't own your own home as collateral, when I was young, I had my parents co-sign for the bond. 
um, yeah, you'd have to talk to the bonding company specifically about that. Um, CSLB does not get involved with it. We require the bond, but how the bond is obtained, who pays for it, that has that's none of our business. Elliot, during COVID, all of the government offices in West Hollywood were shut down. The laws were changed during that time. What do we know? What do we do about that work? Um, well, um, our offices were still open. COVID or not, we did telework, but we were here um, working. Um, we never shut down. Um, our laws, as far as I'm in the know, they never changed. So I don't really know what you mean laws were changed during that time. And what do you do about that work? Um, we're still gonna require, depending on our classification, um, we might ask for more information um, depending on what you apply for. However, 48 months, you know, four years equivalent work experience signed by somebody who has firsthand knowledge, a certifier, um, if, you know, if you are applying for a B or let's say an A or something that might require a finalized permit or a um, inspection report, you know, um, we might still ask for that. Um, um, the, you know, things weren't, I mean, obviously things were a little different, but laws weren't changed here in Sacramento, I mean, you still have to pull a permit for your work, whether or not you got that permit right away when you walked into an office or if that office was open or if they mailed it to you, that permit was still sent to you if you applied for it and if it was approved. So um, I'm not quite certain about what laws you're stating were changed at that time. Um, if you have additional information, um, I would encourage you to use the licensing email address with that more information so that we can make a better determination or give you a little bit of more guidance um, on your question. So again, that email address is licensing at cslb.ca.gov. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. So if you have a question, please go ahead and submit it. If not, we'll give you a three, um, a couple more minutes on that. Thank you, Elliot. That would be the best thing, just so that we have a little bit more information. Thomas, how long does the license process take if all things go smoothly? Um, so right now, um, like I said, we never closed during COVID. Um, obviously, we're a little bit more lenient and back in the offices now. Um, most people are in the office. Um, however, applications also did not slow down. Um, so I believe applications are about four to six weeks out right now. Um, and that might be four weeks out. Um, if I'm not mistaken, is where we're at on new applications. Um, I don't know. I might say with testing and testing goes good and let's say we don't have to return your application for correction, maybe six to eight weeks. 
um, just as a rough estimate with um, processing times. Erwin, what does a gutter contractor require to be licensed? Thank you for your time. So um, it depends. So if you're going to be a metal gutter contractor, um, obviously you have to have um, experience with the C43 um, which is um, sheet metal. And so you are able to um, do um, duct work and whatnot with the metal, um, with the sheet metal um, gutters. Um, so you would have to be able to show that you could um, um, fabricate them, um, install them, um, make sure that, um, um, sorry, um, you'd have to be able to show that you can make them and that you can install them and that they work properly. Um, now, if you were going to do non-metal, It would be, sorry, I don't have these at my, actually, we do have a D24, which is metal products also. Um, so you could, um, you could do plastic, you, do, you could do aluminum, you could do metal, but you have to be able to show that you can uh, fabricate them and that you can install them um, always 48 months. Um, equivalent to four years experience, uh, certified by somebody who has firsthand knowledge of that, um, depending on the classification that you do apply for, whether it be a C or one of the D subcategory classifications, would determine whether or not you have a trade exam to take. Um, once we would review your application and see what was um, certified on your certification of work experience, we would make the determination, okay, is this a D subcategory or should this actually be the C? Um, so um, it's really dependent upon what your certifier claims your work experience is, which one is going to be. But again, um, still have to have 48 months um, as all applicants do. <clears throat> Jean, also, is it good to put in the application letters from clients or real estate agents with work with or for? Does more mean better? Um, not necessarily. Um, I would recommend that you send in your certification of work experience. That's what we're going to base things on. If we need additional information, then we will reach out to you and let you know that we need additional information. Um, if it's just a letter, that's it's really not going to make a difference. Um, letters of recommendation are not equivalent to the certification of work experience. So we do want to see the work experience um, specific to the classification that you're applying for, um, all written out by your certifier. Um, yeah, and letters of recommendation are not... Um, they're not necessarily going to do anything more than your certification of work experience is going to do. Okay, do we have any more questions?
Okay, so I don't see any more questions. So I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Um, so that's all the time we have today for our workshop. I want to thank you for all your questions. If you have any other questions about your application, we do encourage you to drop an email to our licensing division. Um, here's the email address. It's licensing at cslb.ca.gov. Again, that's licensing at cslb.ca.gov. Um, if at some point you need to reschedule your exam, you can get the process started by dropping an email to exams at cslb.ca.gov. We've also put together a list of available resources for women concerning, considering a career in construction. If you haven't already, be sure to download this presentation to get them. You can download the presentation on a green banner on the top of our homepage, which is www.cslb.ca.gov. If you're watching the archived video of this workshop on our YouTube page, you'll find a link to the presentation down below. We welcome your comments or topics for future webcasts. Just drop us an email at social at cslb.ca.gov. Special thanks to our licensing division and public affairs office for their help on this workshop. The Get Licensed to Build workshop is a copyrighted production of the California Contractor State License Board. Thanks for watching.